welcome to an academy i am abhishek datta i did my graduation from id roorkee and my mba from imindore so in the previous video we were studying about the orbitals and the three different quantum numbers in this video we'll start off with the shapes of the atomic orbitals the s orbitals the p orbitals and the d orbitals especially so please pay attention as this is an important topic with this note let's begin our learning session hello students welcome to an academy once again so this lesson is about the shapes of the atomic orbitals we have already studied about what are atomic orbitals in the previous video if you don't know that please revisit that video revise it once and then come on to this session i am abhishek datta you already know about me so let's begin this so we'll be taking up five topics in this video firstly we will study what are nodal surfaces and what do we mean by boundary surface diagrams right this is how we represent the orbital shape then we'll take the three orbitals which we know s p and d and see what are the shapes of these orbitals so let's quickly begin with our first topic which is the topic of nodes or the nodal surfaces so what do we mean by nodes guys so we already know that the square of the wave function which is psi square at any given point it gives us the probability density of the electron at that point and the variation of psi square as a function of r for 1 1s and 2s orbitals are shown in this diagram so what is on the y axis guys on the y axis we have the probability density which is nothing but psi square and what is psi it is nothing but the wave function so psi square will give us the probability density the higher the psi square higher will be the probability of finding an electron and on the x axis guys we have the radius radius of what the distance from which the electron is at from the nucleus right guys so that is in nanometers okay so this is the diagram which we observe so you can see that for the this is for 1s and this is for 2s okay guys and for 1s you can see that it is decreasing and it is approaching zero it is never touching zero while in the case of 2s over here you can see that this uh, point it is reaching at zero so this is the zero level in the end and we, we are going down cutting zero and then increasing again and then again we are reaching for zero hence overall this is cut only once at the zero level so the region where the probability density function reduces to zero in this region is called the nodal surface or simply the nodes now this circle should have been over here and this we call by the name node so whenever the probability density reaches zero when whenever this function reaches zero note that over here in the 1s case this never reaches zero it is approaching zero it never crosses the actual point zero while in this case it crosses once then it increases and then it approaches zero okay guys so the point where the uh, probability density it reaches zero this level over here that is known by the name nodal surfaces right this is what we are learning so let us see if n is the shell number so what is the shell number over here guys shell number is nothing but the orbit number so for here n is equals to 1 and for here n equals to 2 so n is the shell number over here then the total number of nodes can be found out by the summation of these type of nodes so there are two types of nodes angular nodes and the radial nodes angular nodes are l in number and radial nodes can be found out by this if you uh, add both of these figures you will arrive at n minus 1 so the total number of nodes are n minus 1 so over here for 1s we have n equals to 1 and hence the number of nodes here are zero right because n minus 1 is zero and hence you can verify from this figure that the number of nodes are zero while in this case the 2s case here n equals to 2 and hence the number of nodes using this formula is 1 and this is the one area where uh, the probability density is zero and hence it is a node or a nodal surface so these are the formulas you need to remember in this case then we see that these probability density variations can be visualized in terms of charge cloud diagrams now guys these diagrams which i have drawn over here these are known by the name charge cloud diagrams in these diagrams the density of the dots you can see the various dots over here the density of the dots in a region represents what the electron probability density in that region you can see a uh, region over here which is whitish and then it is increasing the dark area is increasing this is similar to this profile which is shown over here right guys and similarly over here it is starts from dark and it goes to the light area 
over here you can see the same profile so this is the charge cloud diagrams both of them so this was our discussion about the nodes and the nodal surfaces guys let's move on to what are boundary surface diagrams now now using these fine boundary surface diagrams we can represent the various shapes of the nodes various shape of the orbitals guys okay so a boundary surface or contour surface is a boundary in space for an orbital on which the value of probability density psi square is constant so you need to draw any boundary over here and you have to say that the probability of finding an electron is constant or psi square is constant within this volume for a given orbital only that boundary surface is taken which encloses a region in which the probability of finding the electron is very high say suppose 90 percent so if you draw this boundary surface you can say that the probability of finding an electron in this boundary is greater than 90 percent okay it should be minimum 90 percent say for example so what is boundary surface diagrams guy? guys boundary surface diagrams give the shapes of the various subshells what are the subshells s p d and f which we'll study later after this slide okay so basically what we are finding is the boundary surface diagrams for each of the subshell and this will give us the shape of the subshell okay guys for example the boundary surface diagrams are of 1s and 2s orbitals are spheres this is what we encountered in the previous slide they are spheres okay and you saw the probability distribution with respect to r that graph also you saw in the previous slide so this is the boundary surface diagram for 1s and 2s orbitals it encloses a region in which the probability of finding the electron is about 90% or more than 90% okay so let's move on to the first shape the first shape which we'll study is the most simple shape it is the s orbitals now guys for s orbitals s is basically the name of the subshell okay so n is the uh, principal quantum number which gives us the orbit number then after that we have the shell the, the orbit number is nothing but the shell number guys okay so after that we have the subshell and this is the first subshell s and it has the uh, l equal to 0 this is the quantity azimuthal uh, quantum number right so this is the l equals to 0 subshell and we know that the number of orbitals within this subshell can be found out by 2l plus 1 which is nothing but 1 so there is only one shape which we need to find out and that is nothing but the sphere which we have already studied so for 1s you'll have a small sphere and for 2s you'll have a bigger sphere and for 3s even bigger sphere and so on so all the s orbitals are spherically symmetric what do you mean by that it means that the probability of finding the electron at a given distance is equal in all the directions okay so they are spherically symmetric then we see that the size of the s orbital increases with increase in n so this is what i said 1s is smaller than 2s and as the number of uh, orbits increase say suppose 4s 4s is the biggest one and 1s is the smallest one over here so the electron is located further away from the nucleus as the n increases right guys it is very logical to say if you have a bigger sphere the electron can be lying somewhere at the end of the sphere as well while in the in this case the electron is lying nearby the sphere and hence it is nearby the nucleus and by the way the nucleus is at the center over here so the number of nodes which we said in the previous slide again so the number of nodes in this case is n minus 1 what is n over here guys it is 1 here n is 2 right guys so let's move on we are done with the s shape orbital let's come on to p shape now so p has the azimuthal number as l equals to 1 okay so l equals to 0 was s l equals to 1 is for p and then again if you find want to find the number of orbitals we use this formula 2l plus 1 which comes to 3 so we need to find out what are the three shapes so this diagram gives us the three shapes now note that it is a dumbbell shaped uh, object so these orbitals are dumbbell shaped you can see this is the shape dumbbell shape there is there are two lobes by lobe i mean this is one lobe and this is the other lobe okay so these are dumbbell shaped uh, particles and they are perpendicular to one another pointing towards the x y and z axis respectively so the three shapes are along the x y and z so this is along the s direction guys this is along the y direction and this is along the z direction so if you have a dumbbell and place it along the x axis you have the 2px orbital similarly the 2py and the 2pz orbitals it is for this reason that they are known by the names px py and pz orbitals respectively 
the probability density function is zero at the center at this center over here the probability function is zero which means you won't find any electrons over there psi square is zero in that case where the nucleus is located the size shape and energy of the three orbitals are identical so all these three they have the uh, energies are levels are same okay they differ however in the orientation only the pre orbitals increase in size and energy with increase in the principal quantum number same as the case with the s shapes orbital as we increase n the size and the energy will keep on increasing and again the number of nodes can be given by this formula n minus 1 so let's quickly do the last shape which is the d shape this is even more simpler so the d subshell what is the l for this the azimuthal number is l equals to 2 okay now we use this formula in to find out the number of orbitals guys so that is 2 l plus 1 which is nothing but 5 so what are the five shapes these are the five shapes guys so th there are uh, this is the only one which has a peculiar shape otherwise it has four lobes over here each of them have four lobes and their direction is different in each case only the orientation is different but all of them have the same energy states so there are five orbitals which are designated as dxy dyz and d zx so these are the three which i told just now what is dx square minus y square this is the diagram dx square minus y square and the peculiar one is 3dz square so this is a peculiar one where it has only two lobes where the rest of this all of them have four lobes in them so so the shape of 3z square orbital is different from that of the others but all the five orbitals are equivalent in energy so all of them are equivalent only this is different in shape here too the total number of nodes are n minus 1 okay let's move on guys and we have reached at the end of the video let's summarize quickly what all we learned we learned about the definition of nodal surfaces what do you mean by that it means that the probability of finding an electron on that plane is zero because the region where probability density is zero that is how we defined it right so nodal surfaces or nodes this is how we defined and what are boundary surface diagrams guys they give us the shape of the various subshells for example s p d f and so on all the s orbitals now we come on to the shape of s orbitals they are symmetrically symmetric spherically symmetric right guys so we saw that each and every s orbitals there was only one type of s orbital which is a sphere and they are symmetric symmetric spherically then there were p orbitals and we saw the three types of p orbitals all of them were dumbbell shaped only their orientation were different and they were named by these names because of their orientation towards x axis y axis and the z axis respectively Finally, we moved on to the D shapes, D orbital shapes, and we found out there were five different types of D orbitals, which were designated by these names, out of which only one of them, the last one, was a peculiar shape, rest all of them were similar, but all five of them have the same energy states, okay? We also saw the total number of nodes, how to calculate that, it is nothing but n minus 1, which is divided into the angular nodes and the radial nodes. Angular nodes are calculated by just L. And radial nodes is calculated by using the formula n minus l minus 1. Okay, so please remember all these two formulas. So, with this, we have reached at the end of the video. Thank you guys for listening to me. As always, if you enjoy watching my videos, you can follow me over here and ask me any questions if you have in the comment section. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye bye.